Okay, ladies, this week we are talking about our identity. And this might be my favorite, except I think I said that last week. All right, so <laughs> our identity. <clears throat> I, you're a bunch of girls. So I am assuming that you have seen the movie Princess Diaries. So just stick with me for a minute on the plot. In that movie, the moment that she finds out that she actually is a princess from another country, everything changes. Her whole life changes, her outside appearance, her inside self, everything changes. She has confidence, she has a purpose. When we have a purpose, when we know who we are, our life changes. It has a trajectory, it's going in a direction. God gave you each a purpose. And this verse in Ephesians tells us exactly what the world is doing under in its attack on our purpose. Satan knows how important our purpose is. And in Ephesians 2.2, 2, and this is the message trans version, which I love, it says, you let the world, which doesn't know the first thing about living, tell you how to live. You filled your lungs with polluted unbelief and then exhaled disobedience. The world wants us not to believe God. It wants to fill our head with other rules for living, like follow your heart and worry about you. You do you and that's okay. There's all kinds of lies that the world is trying to feed you about who you are and what your identity is. And that results in disobedience. Because we aren't believing God and filling our lungs with belief, we are polluting them with unbelief. It's not what we were created for. We were created with a purpose by our creator. The world likes to do a study, um, and, and in my, uh, I was a teacher, so in my education classes, we would study children and whether nature made them what they were or nurture made them what they were. Now, the study of nature is that your characteristics and your DNA determine everything about you, even to the degree, sometimes they, they study this and say, even to the degree of almost your personality is set up in your nature and that it can't really be changed. Now, the other study of thought is nurture, that you're kind of a blank canvas when you come into the world and the way you are nurtured determines who you will become, the way you are taught, the experiences that you have in life. But I'm here to tell you, it's not one or the other. It is, in fact, both. God is in complete control of your destiny. And he, I'm going to read this exactly how I have it. God put you in the exact family that you're in, in your exact birth order. He planned who your parents are. He put you in this space and time and history, in this exact place where you were born, with a purpose. He set up your nature. He also determines every circumstance that will ever happen to you in his sovereignty and can use nurture to mold you into who he knows you really are. You see, what we are now has been tainted by sin. Our original identity is less, it's not less us, but it is more about our holiness than our happiness. God is determined to get us back to our holiness because he knows that is best. And we get distracted simply looking for happiness. So our identity is so important because what you believe about yourself determines where you're going. What your purpose is, which is wrapped up in what you believe to be true about you, determines the trajectory of what your life will be. So our identities are based on two things. And there are fill in the blanks in the back of your book in the study guide you should go to later. Make sure you do that in the back. But you can fill them in with these two things. Our identity is based on, it's twofold. It is our conception and our expression of who we believe that we are. Okay, so conception. Conception first has to do with everything you believe and all of your thoughts. So your conception of who you are is who you think that you are, the knowledge that you have about yourself, the things people have told you about yourself. It's your thoughts about yourself. You take that conception of yourself and it determines how you express 
yourself to the world. What you believe about yourself is how you'll act. You will always, always act on what you believe on. Not what you say you believe, but what you actually believe. So our expression is based on our conception of what we believe that we are. Satan understands this about us. His main goal is to ruin our expression of who we are. Because if we are in Christ and we, are, we have asked Jesus into our lives, the Holy Spirit has filled us, then our expression of Christ to the world will lead others to Jesus. That's what Satan doesn't want to happen. He wants our expression of Christ to be skewed, to not be quite right, to be off and not attract people to God. So to get at that expression so that we aren't the fragrance of Christ to the world and we don't express that well, he knows to attack our conception of who we are, our thoughts, who we think we are. If we think we don't matter, if we think that what we do has little value, if we think we aren't capable, if we think we don't have the power, all of the things that we can think incorrectly affect our expression because we absolutely will act on what we believe to be true. If you do not believe me on that, I have a great illustration for you. I mentioned that I was a teacher. This is the best illustration of our conception and expression and that we will act on what we believe on. Okay, at the time, I taught a lot of grades, but at this point in time, I was teaching seventh and eighth grade language arts. Um, you don't know me very well. You're just watching me on the video, but even from several videos, you can probably tell that I'm pretty excited about most things taught with my hands. I am all in. So, I was teaching prepositions to 7th and 8th graders, and I was, picture me, all in, okay? So we had been going through under the house, over the roof, inside the, and I mean, prepositions lend themselves to hand motions. We had been seriously delving into every preposition you can think of, and I had just finished giving my kids their assignment. They've all started. I sat down behind my desk on my rolly chair started typing something while they're finishing up what they're doing and I get a question. And to answer that question, as you might imagine me doing, I stood up because I wanted to use motions and for everyone to be involved. I stood up, we talked about the preposition they were identifying, I did my hand motions. I firmly believed that my chair <clears throat> was where I left it. Well, it was where I left it. Um, I firmly believed that my chair was still right behind me the truth, however, had changed. In my motions and explanation of prepositions, I had moved slightly away from where my chair was. So what I believed, my conception, what I knew to be true, wasn't actually true. I wholeheartedly believed it and sat down anyway. I missed the chair entirely. Now, this is a room of 7th and 8th graders who all of the girls were like, <gasps> and all of the boys just burst into laughter. So. I was totally fine, by the way, and class did go on and we finished prepositions for the day. But for the illustration of the story, I completely believed that the chair was behind me, whether it was true or not. That's what I acted on. What I believe will always determine my actions. Whether what I'm believing is true or not, it doesn't matter. That's what my actions will be based on. So when we talk about our identities, they're so important that we believe the truth because who we are is where we are going. And if we don't know the truth about who we are, we're not gonna get there. We will be derailed and that is Satan's plan. He wants to distract us and derail us. But the good news is that he cannot completely do that. He can distract us. He can, he can um, what's the other word I had? Distort things. He can discourage us, De but derailing he cannot completely do if we are believing the truth. We can be distracted for a time. We can be discouraged. But if we know the truth and we're acting on it, Satan's plans for us will not prevail. God's will. So this is what I want you to take next. I don't want you to think that Satan has too much power over our destinies. But I want you to understand that he can get me thinking that I am only capable of what I am capable of. And for this, I want to share a little bit about family re resemblance. See, this is why Satan is after us, because he doesn't want our expression of Christ to look too much like Christ. 
Okay, you are all in a living room with Emmy right now, and she will back me up with this story. Um, Mitchells, which I am married into, um, the Mitchell men, they are, they look uncannily alike. Okay, their family resemblance is a bit ridiculous. And I have a son who's 14 years old who looks just like his dad, and consequently also like Emmy's dad, his uncle, and his grandfather. They legit have the same flat spot on the back of their right ear. It's that eerie. I know that my husband and his brother have used each other's driver's licenses. That's how much they look alike. That funny story is actually my goal. I want to look so much like Jesus that the family resemblance is totally clear and that instead of seeing me, people will see him. That's what Satan doesn't want to happen. He wants us to think that we are only us, but we aren't. We are the expression of Jesus to the world. We are filled with his spirit and his power. And if we keep that in mind, Satan knows what we can accomplish. Me on my own, I'm not going to accomplish that much. He wants us to think we're on our own. But that is absolutely not the truth.